as a middle order batsman. I'm Nicholas Watkins. On the weekends, I play for East Redland Scoot Club as an opening batsman. There's 12 clubs in the first grade team in, in Brisbane. All the Bulls players, they haven't got Bulls duties. They go back to first grade, and that's the level we all play in against. Facing all the Bulls players, Andy Bickle, you know, all the great bowlers out there now, I'm getting the chance to face them. We first started playing cricket was out the front of our house, and Mum decided to let us join a club. I used to like watching Mark Warbat and of course I wanted to become a batsman and I've had great success with that when I was a young kid and here I am now playing first grade for Redlands. I um, bowled in the juniors, I just couldn't pick up a bat. I used to get picked in my zone, with Nick get picked for batting I get picked for bowling and now when I've finished juniors I can pick up a bat and I've been batting ever since. When junior crickets that finish we divided. We, yeah, we just divided. Nicholas went to East Redmond, I went to Beanley because the opportunities came up for me and I grabbed it. Same for Nick. Maybe one day we'll both play in the one club one day. I think I think that will happen one day, maybe a couple of years time and hopefully win a premiership with my brother. We never let being deaf affect us. Playing at first grade standard, we're doing pretty well there. There's not many deaf people that can match our standard of cricket. They were very determined to stay in that spot. We're not brothers, we're best friends. We do everything together and we always help each other out. And having Andrew beside me made it a lot easier, a lot of support. We always say um, all the best for today. We text each other what's going on during the day, what's the score and all that. Our parents um, discovered when both of us were three years old by um, tapping two wooden blocks behind us. This went like that, bang, bang. And we wouldn't take any notice because we couldn't hear it. We have to wear a hearing aid, of course and that helps us out a lot. And so I got one in my right ear and he just got one on his left. And myself, I can wear one in the left ear, but I didn't, I didn't like it because Andrew was wearing one, one here and eight and so we were twins, so we copied. As soon as they put it in, I took it out through out the window and, and I never wore uh, my left ear and eight. We first learned how to use sign language. We, we went to preschool. Being full deaf, you have to be able to communicate with them, so we signed, and, and I've been signing ever since. When we were playing cricket, um, Mick would wicket keep, and I would bowl, and a guy would be maybe a good foot out of the crease, and we, so Nick would sign me, you know, to do a slow ball while I'll come up to the stump and do a stumpy. And another thing is, um, if I was on the sideline, Nick was on 98, I could sign to him, say how many he needs to get 100. When we first became involved in deaf cricket, um, we were playing school cricket and some rep seen us play and he asked us to play a couple games for deaf cricket and they were really impressed so we ended up playing a couple Sundays for them and um, the good thing is they had Queensland deaf side and Australian deaf side at the moment I'm skipping the Australian team. The difference between hearing cricket and deaf cricket. Obviously, deaf people can't hear yes or no and wait, and that's the batsman's call. So when they run between wickets, they make eye contact. So, so eye contact is the most important thing. As an advantage of being deaf, we can hear any sledging. That was the best part when you're batting. You couldn't put up with any sledging, you just couldn't hear them. Uh, Nicholas's cage from East Redland is an agent and England clubs contact us to see if we both wanted to go over, if we were interested. I never even thought of going to England. I thought you've got to play for Australia or Queensland to go overseas and play cricket. But you can do it by yourself. If you're good enough, you can go over. Andrew and I couldn't go to one club because 
um, you only allowed one overseas player per team. I was uh, about an hour south east of London, and it was in Kent. I was in a little town called Hyde. I played at Gosport, and it's about 90 minutes south of London. It's in Hampshire County. Sometimes you could say, oh, I haven't seen Nick for a month, and then you ring him up one night and, and catch up during the week. Oh, we rang once a week, see how we went on the weekends. So. And when we get together and talked about our time in England, it was probably the best part about it. Uh, first two weeks over in England, I had two low scores and I was really struggling big time. So I got a return from Canton back to see Nichols and um, I was telling him why I was struggling and all that and he helped me out. Well that's what um, brothers were for, all best friends. I wasn't having tr trouble with scoring runs because I got 100 for my first game over there. But um, I had to help Andrew out a little bit like because he was under pressure. You gotta go out there and enjoy your cricket. If you don't enjoy your cricket, you you won't do well. When I came back that week from the camp, I got 110 the following week. So that really helped. With our 20th birthday over there. The first time we had our birthday apart. Apart. Yeah. The night comes around. You having a couple of beers and you wish your brother was there, but you know maybe we missed each other for the you know, half a day, but overall, life goes on. Well, as we get older, we'll have to get used to it because we can't be together all the time. Um, Nick and I probably prefer to play cricket in the hearing level because there's more goals to achieve and more levels to go up, but it's the only chance that Nick and I get together and play cricket is the deaf side, that's all. And we, and we look forward to doing that because we understand each other's game and improve on each other's game as well. England Deaf Tour is coming to Australia. It should be a good tour. Oh, I'm really looking forward to it. And Andrew, I'm sure he is because he's captain, the number one leader of Australia. He should be. Now my cricket highlight was over in England when I got 229 not out. And I did it in 34 overs. I think I hit about 44, 38 fours and five sixes. But yeah, I had a good day out and hit a couple of houses. I broke the club record with uh, previously 196 not out. I um, played against WA in 2000 for Queensland versus WA in a deaf thing. And I made 186 off about 100 balls. And I really hit, hit him well that day and I hit one. Six, and it, it, it's the longest I ever hit. And then after the game, they're all saying, "Oh, Ricky Pointing hit this six on this uh, at the drum because you can see it. It's a big thing." And um, I hit a six just right beside it. And Ricky Pointing and myself and another guy are the only three cricketers have hit sixes in there for like the last 50 years. My number one priority is to make a first grade hundred, and if I do make a first grade hundred, I'll be over the moon because it's just one of the hardest things I'll ever do. Once that's out of the way, then I'll think about making uh, the Queensland Second Eleven QAS, and then after that, the ultimate dream is to play for the Queensland Bulls. It'd be nice to see some deaf people like ourselves go and play for Queensland Bulls. I'd like to see that one day. My um, ultimate dream is to play for Queensland Bulls, as all Nick said. You got to work hard from, you know, cementing yourself as a first grade position. Yeah, second eleven would be, you know, pretty good to get picked for that. You know, QAS they can help you and improve your cricket big time. But it's up to Nick and I to put all the hard yards to get to where we want to, and we'll get there. Mm.